Hey guys, I wanted to do a little show and tell, um, partly because I have some really neat books that I wanted to share with you, um, Christmas books. And I also thought it might be helpful to see um, a variety of different books that you can use when you're making Christmas junk journals. So I thought I would share with you the books that I've used to make the journals that I'm doing for this year. Um, and also just kind of flip through a few finds that I have got this year that are just so neat and I can't wait to show them to you. So um, I've got two huge stacks here. You can see I've got a whole bunch of books here and a whole bunch of books here. Um, I won't go through every single one, um, but let me just share um, a little bit of this. So the obvious um, choice when you are thinking about books that you can take pages from for your junk journal pages are children's um, storybooks. So obviously they are great for using as your covers for junk journals, but of course the pages inside are awesome too. So I have a whole bunch of different books here, um, lots of like little golden books, um, but also wonder books. Um, this publisher makes really awesome um, children's books also. And what I love about the wonder books is the illustrations on the inside covers are always really, really special. Um, I'll show you a couple here. And if you're lucky, you can find ones that aren't scribbled on. <laughs> Sometimes they do have a name inside. Um, but these were all in super good shape. So the fronts and the backs of these, um, the backs have illustrations, but they're, they're not like a page from the story. So I will usually cover the back, but I leave the front one as is, and they're super cute. So those are wonder books, and um, there's so many cute titles. And then, of course, um, Little Golden Books, they make awesome Christmas titles. And also you can look for smaller books. So Whitman Publishers um, or Telltale Books are really good um, choices for Christmas books. The um, Vintage Junior Elf Books, um, those are published by, oh gosh, why is that slipping my mind? Um, the Junior Elf books, they don't have as many Christmas titles, but Whitman, if you're looking for like smaller books, um, do. And this is not a Christmas story, but I love this cover for the um, colors. And um, if I have time this season, I want to make a, um, a journal out of that one. And also this one's really beautiful too. And that one's a Telltale book. I've already taken all the pages out of this one because I... Um, I used this one. Isn't that awesome? This will make another great small journal, but I use the pages out of there in the journals that I'm making this year. So children's Christmas books are awesome for great illustrations. Um, readers are also a good choice. Um, actually mark the page in here. So what I was looking for in the readers, and I love to use readers because the children's um, illustrations or the illustrations of children are always so sweet. They're my favorite. So um, like this one um, has winter pictures in it. So um, I went through all my readers and looked for any snow scenes and I was able to find quite a few um, snow scenes in there that have children featured. So that's another choice. And then there's some other um, children's books that um, that are really fun. So these like they're called die cut shape books. These are really great. Um, this one is I think this is also printed by um, Little Golden Books. It's a golden shape book. And this one is by Artcraft. And this publisher is a little bit more um, rare, a little harder to find. This book is actually part of my personal collection. Um, this is a great example of a book that I won't take apart and that I just save in my collection because this one is hard to find. And um, the illustrations in this one are just amazing. And this one's in really, really good shape. I mean, it's practically like brand new shape. And the colors, you know, they haven't faded. And then there's this really awesome design on every page. It's just really, really unique. And um, I just adore these pages. So this one is not something that I am going to take apart. Now, if I find another copy of this, and I have been looking and I have not found another copy of this exact book, um, but I will find a copy that's in less um, good condition. And then I'm good with using those in my journals. But something like this, I will just keep in my purse collection. 
so yeah so these little die cut shape books um are a good source also and it's neat because the sh all the pages are out of this one um but the shape is just something kind of interesting to use instead of a traditional um you know rectangular shape page it adds a little more interest to your journals and then you can also look for really tall books so most books are like six by eight or so um but sometimes they publish the same books in like tall sizes i know a little golden book um they'll do like i think they call them big golden books <laughs> and they're like 13 14 inches tall and i love using those because you can um turn the pages to the side and like fold part of the page in and have like a little fold out area in your journal just to make it more interesting and the illustrations in this one are really beautiful too so I have several copies of this one and I use these in my journals and this one I'm keeping for my own um, personal collection so um, not because it's particularly rare this one actually um, I've seen this one quite a few times on eBay um, so it's not hard to find but I just really love it so I will keep it in my collection and then I get other copies to use in my journals so all of these um, these books can be found on eBay and Etsy. Those are the best sources. I have found um, obviously used bookstores and thrift shops and antique shops are great too. Um, but those can be kind of hit or miss. So if you are looking for books, um, I highly recommend checking out eBay and Etsy. So, um, so besides storybooks, there's all kinds of other um, books that you can use. So I've got a couple examples here, um, some magazines. So Golden Magazine and Humpty Dumpty's. And there's also Jack and Jill magazines. And any of their like um, like December issues will have really great um, graphics in them. This one I've already taken out all the Christmas pages, I think, and use them in my journals. Um, but the graphics um, and the colors are really beautiful in these and they're a nice size and the quality of the paper is really good in these two they're like a little bit thicker so um golden magazines and um these pack of fun um they're like scrap craft magazines so they're little craft ideas and the december issue um november december they have lots of cute little um holiday craft ideas in them and the graphics are just really neat and I love um, all the different font styles throughout um, the uh, pages so it just adds a, not, a lot of interest to your journals when you have different kinds of um, graphics and different fonts inside and I like these also because um, the size is nice it's a smaller size so I like to vary the sizes of my pages and then Humpty Dumpty um, is, is good too. So just a nice small, smaller size. Um, and then the covers are really neat on those too. So there's another one. And then speaking of like magazines and catalogs, um, this is actually more of a catalog, not a magazine. But, um, and these are a little bit harder to find also, but these are like little mini um, brochures that feature um, like sewing patterns in a particular like season or something. So this was for December and really gorgeous illustrations in here that would be perfect in a junk journal. And like I said, these are a little bit harder to find, um, but McCall's um, and a couple of the other big brands, um, Vogue, um, I think in Butterick, I, I don't know if Simplicity has the small ones of these or not. I don't recall. I have a few of the um, McCall's ones, but those are a fun um, thing you can add to your journals too. And then of course, cookbooks. Um, I always add cookbook pages to my journals and there's like no shortage of Christmas cookbooks out there or just general cookbooks that have, um, you know, sections for different kind of baked goods, cookies, pies, candies. Um, so things that would be good for Christmas. And um, I like to use all different sizes. So these little booklets are nice because they come in different sizes. So you have different pages, uh, page sizes, um, different graphics again, like the fonts are really neat. Just some great mid-century designs on these um you know each one they have different colors um in the in the words 
I love that. And then some of them have really great photos also. Um, so of course some of these are already taken apart and I've taken out all the good pages and used them in my journals. Um, see these are all black and white. I think I've I took out all the colored pages, but just to give you an idea of some different ones to look for, you could search for, um, you know, of course, vintage cookbook, vintage Christmas cookbooks, um, vintage cookbook pamphlets or booklets. Um, sometimes sellers will list them um, as like a pamphlet. So that's something to look for. And um, I really like this McCall's cookie collection too. And um, it's got some neat little just graphics besides the photos in here. So I really love those. And then, of course, Betty Crocker's cookbook, cookie book. Um, cookies always remind me of Christmas time. So this is another really good one to have um, on hand. And it has not just Christmas cookies, but just cookies in general. And the graphics and the photographs are really great in this one. So that's a good one to have. And then... Um, the, uh, <laughs> the hazards of vintage books, sometimes they, uh, they crumble on you. Um, so Christmas songbooks are another favorite of mine to add to journals. I use songbooks um, all throughout the year um, just because I love the, just the graphic of the music is just something different, you know, than text or just photo, uh, illustrations. But um, for Christmas, you can find tons, obviously, because of Christmas carols, and they come in all different sizes. So these are all right here on the top, or all these little like pamphlet size um, carol books. And like this one's like a four by six size. So I love using these in my ephemera packs and they make a nice background on a page. I've already taken pages out of that one. And the covers of some of these are so beautiful. And I love this one too because of the graphics, the illustrations inside and the, the font on these pages is really awesome. And I got, I think, several of these from Paper Bits and Baubles. Um, one of my friends on Instagram, but she has an Etsy shop also by the same name. And I think she's got several of these left in her shop. So she is a great place to get ephemera. And um, isn't this awesome? So these pages are black and red and just have just awesome graphics. I like, I just really love all these different kinds of fonts to add to my pages. Um, this one is green and red, love these. So lots of different choices there. Um, this one, again, this is all black and white, but really neat illustrations. And again, that really awesome font style. So. That's another good one. Treasure chest of Christmas songs and carols. I got this one at a local antique shop last year. This is my all time favorite carols book. Um, Christmas carols um, by Whitman. This book is pretty easy to find. Um, I, ha I now have uh, at least five copies of it because it's my absolute favorite. Um, the illustrations in this, wait do you see them. Uh, this is one that I'm keeping in my personal collection, but I've used um, pages out of these for my journals. And I just absolutely adore the illustrations in this. Um, they're just gorgeous. The colors and the children's faces, and it's just awesome. And this one's great too because there's a lot of those like mid-century um, pinks and blues throughout here and they're a little bit harder to find. Um, you know, most things you find are like traditional colors. So whenever I see ones that have like this kind of um, color scheme, I always grab them. So I just absolutely love this one. So yeah, that one's Christmas Carols, um, Whitman book, but just search vintage Christmas Carols. Um, or Vintage Christmas Carol book, and I bet you'll find find this one. This is another one that has a really great cover on it, and I actually used all the pages in this last year. But I saved the cover because it's awesome. And you could use the cover in your journal um, also. It's just really thick, but I saved that. Another um, option for pages is coloring books. So coloring books are, are fun because you could actually color the pages, add them to your journal, and it's just kind of like a little fun artistic thing you could do inside of your journal. Um, 
so that's that's one there's a whole bunch of different christmas coloring books out there um, this is a dot to dot and the graphics illustrations on the outside so these are really awesome also um, so now we are getting down to my absolute favorite so i'm actually going to save this for last um, do that flip through last so these books are really really special um, these are my personal collection um, every time I buy one, I think I'm going to use them in my journals and then I can't part with them. <laughs> so I am looking to get some of these that I can use in my journals. Um, it's a little bit hard to find them at reasonable prices. These cost a little bit more. These I can't even fit it in the camera. Um, these are like 14 inch tall books and um, they are like a linen um, finish or linen pages is usually what they call them they're really thick and they have a texture to them I'm not sure if you can see that um, and I have not maybe I tried with one page I believe I did um, last year try a linen book that I have not a Christmas one but a different one and I try putting it in a journal and folding the pages can be a little bit tricky because they are prone to crack because they're really thick so I haven't really figured out if they would be feasible for journals, but they are so beautiful. I would really love to add these um, pages to my journals because I love sharing real vintage, um, just kind of unique pages in my journals. So I'm working on that. But these linen books are amazing because they are lithograph printed. So the colors are super saturated and really bright. And even though they are like 70, 80 years old, the colors do not fade in these. And they are just really incredible. Isn't this awesome? So this is one of my absolute favorites. So that one is The Night Before Christmas. And a lot of them are this particular story. Um, the night before Christmas, I find a lot of these. Um, so I have several here. This one is also really awesome. This one's um, illustrated by Florence Sarah Winship. She did a lot of night before Christmas um, illustrations in various books. And this one's really special because the Santas in here um, are flocked. At least most of them are, not all the pages. This one has a lot of writing in it. Um, fortunately, it's pencil, so I think I can try to erase them eventually. But this is just, for, again, for my personal collection, so I don't mind too much. But oh, I just love all the blues in here. And again, they're just so saturated. And there's just no fading at all on any of these pages because they're the lith lithographic print. Um, so yeah, all his outfits here um, and his hat here is flocked so these are really special and um i find them at all different prices i mean i want to say the average price on these before shipping is probably at least 25 dollars um and then i've seen them up to like you know 75 dollars for like really good condition ones um so these cost a little bit more oops one just fell off my table and this is another one so they're all the same story but Every illustration is different and um, the graphics are just so pretty and so detailed. So really, really awesome. And this one is um, not a storybook or a coloring book, although they did have a um, Little Miss Christmas coloring book. I don't have that one yet, um, but this one is actually a paper doll set and she is she is so adorable so it's little miss christmas and holly bell and then all their outfits so this one i found um already with all the outfits cut up so this one wasn't too too expensive i think this one was like 25 dollars um here i'll show you some of the outfits because they are so cute <clears throat> the ones um of this that are intact where the dolls haven't been taken out and the clothing hasn't been cut out those are a lot more those are like 50 and up um, as far as what I've seen, but they come with like all these cute little outfits and there's like little, um, access accessories. <laughs> can't find my words. Um, let's see. I don't know. I was just going to show you some of the different accessories too, but I just kind of have all the outfits piled up and I just, I love little miss Christmas. They actually, um, someone bought the, a company called paper studio press, I believe. 
um, has the copyright to these and they've reprinted um, this exact um, paper doll collection and so you can buy it today it's a reproduction it's the exact same designs but um you know they bought the copyright and they are producing these exact paper dolls um, that you can buy today and they have a website i think it's I think it's paperstudiopress.com. I'm not exactly 100% um, sure on that. This is a vintage one um, from 1965, but you can buy these if you can't find them vintage and you love them. Um, you can buy this exact thing in the reproduction. And so this, I saved the best for last. <laughs> um, so I wanted to use pages from a toy catalog in my journals. And I was looking for a Sears wish book from like the 50s or 60s. I thought that would be a lot of fun, um, but they're really expensive. Um, most of them that I found from those decades were like over, well over $100. So when I was looking for the Sears catalogs, I came across this one and this is Billy and Ruth. I had actually never heard of them before, but this is just a toy catalog. And this is their December issue or their Christmas issue, I should say. And it's 1952. I bought two of them. I have one from 1954 that I'm keeping in my personal collection. And this is the one I bought. Um, no, actually, this is the one for my personal collection. I have one from 1954. Um, it's very similar inside. And I'm using that one in my junk journals that I'm, I'm making for Christmas this year. And this is so amazing, isn't it? It's just all children and toys. And I love how like the prices are in here and it's just so neat to see um, all of these vintage toys and it's I read like some of the descriptions and they are they are hilarious and a lot of them the descriptions are geared towards children so you, this catalog was really designed for a child to look through and read and like you know pick out what they want for Christmas and you know circle the items that they want and I couldn't believe the um, the condition that both of these catalogs I got were in. I mean, the colors are still really great, and um, just the condition of the pages. They're a little bit brittle. Um, you know, the pages that I took out of the one that I'm using in my journals, um, the pages were pretty fragile, but for the most part, I mean, the edges and everything are really great on them, and they just have, like, the neatest toys. Um, I love the Shadow Wave hair weaving kit it's like i guess it's got chemicals in it i don't know i mean some of these toys are they're really funny um yeah i spent quite a bit of time looking through these and i just was so excited to add these to my christmas journals because for me um i got my eye out for one of these cribs like in real life like now <laughs> um they're hard to find um at a reasonable price um but yeah so yeah, I just wanted to add these to my journals because to me, like Christmas time, like vintage Christmas is all about kids and and toys and cookies and, you know, all those kinds of things. I love these um, these plastic dolls. So I was reading the description on it and they're by Rushton. So I don't know if you're familiar with Rushton dolls, but um, those are the ones with like the plastic or the rubber faces you know, stuffed animals with rubber faces, and I absolutely love them. I have a Rushton Santa with a rubber face, and he's the only Rushton I have, but I would like to add more to my collection. And it was just so neat seeing that in this catalog, you know, like there it was, 1954. This is when they, you know, came out, and they were $1.95, and um, it's just really funny. Like, here's those squeaks. Um, you know, a lot of people collect vintage squeaks and, you know, this is like one of the catalogs where you would originally find them. So this was a really fun um, find this year. And um, I wanted to share that with you guys and all of these books. I hope that these give you some ideas or at least maybe it was kind of fun to look at and um yeah, so let me know if you have any questions about anything. Again, like Etsy and eBay are great sources if you can't find these in antique shops or um, you don't have time to go to estate sales or that sort of thing. Um, check online, Etsy and eBay, and um, you'll be surprised at what you find. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will talk to you guys soon.